Thank you again for joining me. I'm Pat Kiernan. This is Pat's Papers. We do this every weekday morning, going through the nation's newspapers to find some of the highlights for you. Here's some of what we found for you today. On this Christmas Eve, we begin with Snowzilla. In Anchorage, Alaska, the Powers family has had an annual tradition of building a giant snowman, 25 feet tall, so big it becomes a tourist attraction, so big the neighbors complain about the extra traffic. The city declared Snowzilla a public nuisance, and that's when Snowzilla's hundreds of fans started to emerge. Suddenly, Snowzilla has returned. The Powers family isn't claiming responsibility, but somebody built Snowzilla in their yard again this year. The city says it will at least wait until after Christmas before deciding what to do with the unauthorized snowman. The Chicago Tribune among the newspapers with a story about a report issued yesterday by Barack Obama's transition office. That report declared there was no quid pro quo arrangement between Governor Rod Blagojevich or the president-elect's office regarding the vacant U.S. Senate seat for Illinois. Got a kick out of the San Jose Mercury News, which reprinted yesterday's front page of the New York Post to go along with a story about how the Post had played up the hunkiness of the president-elect. TMZ.com wrote uh, yesterday that Obama is still humble enough to do his laundry on his washboard abs. Back to the Chicago Tribune for the weather news. 500 flights canceled at O'Hare Airport yesterday. That is a headline you will see repeated in some form in much of the U.S. Americans struggling to get home for Christmas. Two KU football players are on the front page of the Kansas City Star, stranded at the airport there. The forecasts have a second storm coming at about the time many travelers will be returning from their holiday break. To the Baltimore Sun, a front page story says independent retailers have been more nimble than the big box stores in getting customers to buy this Christmas. An example, a jeweler in Baltimore buys gold jewelry and melts it down, and often those customers use that cash in hand to turn around and immediately buy new jewelry. The head of the Salvation Army in Massachusetts says, Our prayers have been answered. Despite a tough economy, the Christmas Kettle Charity Campaign in the Boston area is going to exceed its $3.5 million fundraising goal. Boston Herald writer Jessica Van Sack says the outpouring of generosity may actually have come because of the economic crisis, as people realize there are more of their neighbors in need this year. International news, the Washington Post covers Russia's latest threat to stop the sales of natural gas to Ukraine. Russia issued the warning yesterday calling on Kiev to pay its $2 billion gas bill. The threat jeopardizes the flow of gas throughout the region. Europe gets about 25% of its gas from Russia through Ukraine's pipelines. The Post also reporting on the dismal November housing sales numbers. The housing market is hampered by buyers who just can't get loans. On the surface, there are areas that look like winners, but uh, then you look at the details. The western U.S. region saw existing home sales up 17.9% compared to a year ago. Sounds great, but then you realize those sales were spurred by prices that have fallen 25%. In the San Francisco Chronicle, are you feeling guilty about your carbon footprint? San Francisco International Airport piloting a passenger carbon offset program. Kiosks to be installed at the airport will calculate the carbon footprint for your flight and will calculate the offset price. It's usually about $4. I got a lot of snow, but they need more ice in Buffalo. The Buffalo News reporting on the need for more hockey rinks in that region. Plans are in the works for more indoor arenas. They typically cost about $4 million. One reason for the big demand is the growth of girls hockey. For 10 years, electronic books have been kicking around. For nine years, sales have been weak, but the New York Times reports this is finally the year that the e-book is catching on. Most of that has to do with Amazon.com's Kindle book device, and much of that success is because Oprah Winfrey mentioned it on TV and how much she likes it. The Kindle's $359. It's sold out until February. The demographics defy the usual consumer electronics profile. A typical buyer is a 55-year-old woman. Also in the New York Times, the Yankees seem determined to outspend everybody else in baseball. With the signing of first baseman Mark Teixeira, the team will have the four largest contracts in the major leagues. The team's 2009 payroll will likely be over $200 million. That'll likely be $50 million ahead of the second place team, as the Times story points out. That doesn't guarantee the team is headed to the World Series. They outspent all the other teams last year and didn't make the playoffs. A star-studded list of performers at this year's inauguration galas in the L.A. Times, a story about the Creative Coalition, which started planning its inaugural party before the last midterm election. Sting, Sam Moore, and Elvis Costello will perform there. USA Today has a story about the inauguration as well. This one's focused on the corporate side of things. Barack Obama has refused any corporate money to pay for the main event, so companies looking for any related event as a way to spend their sponsorship cash. In fact, the story mentions the Creative Coalition party 
as one of the events backed by corporate money, the coalition promotes a domestic movie production. Finally, the Entertainer of the Year Award, the annual Associated Press vote, put Tina Fey on top. The New York Daily News mentions her central role in NBC's 30 Rock, but says the key to her high profile this year was clearly a dead-on impersonation of Sarah Palin that ruled the election cycle. And that's our report for today. I'm Pat Kernan. Thanks for being with us today. We do this every weekday, and you can always go to patspapers.com where you will find the rundown of the stories we featured today and links you can click on to get to the individual newspapers where those stories were published.